So this video is for those of you who are about to take trig either in high school or in college. And so one of the concepts that I'm going to cover is an expression called Sokotoa. And this expression, it helps us to remember the formulas dealing with the three most common trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. So the first one, so, tells you that sine of some angle theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And for the last part, TOA, it tells us that the tangent ratio is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So let's say if we have a right triangle. And so this is a 90 degree angle. And we're going to say this is the angle theta. So opposite to theta would represent this side on the right. Adjacent to it is the side below it or next to the angle. And across the 90 degree angle is the longest side of the triangle. And so that is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So let's say we have a right triangle that looks like this. And let's say it's a, a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And here's the angle theta. So what is sine theta based on that triangle? Before we get the answer, let's identify which side is opposite, adjacent, and the hypotenuse with respect to the angle. So 3 is adjacent to the angle, 4 is opposite to it, and 5 is the hypotenuse. So we know that sine theta, based on the so part of Sokotoa, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So opposite to theta is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. So sine theta is going to be 4 over 5. Now, let's apply the same thing to find the cosine ratio. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side has a measure of 3, and the hypotenuse is 5. So cosine theta is 3 over 5. Now, to find the tangent ratio, it's equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So in this case, it's 4 over 3. Now, you can also find tangent by taking the sine ratio and divided by the cosine ratio. So if you take 4 over 5 and divide it by 3 over 5, the 5's will cancel, giving you 4 over 3. Now let's try another example. So here's another right triangle. And let's say we're given two of the three sides of this right triangle. We're going to say the angle theta is right here. Go ahead and find the value of sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta based on this example. So feel free to take a minute and pause the video. Now the first thing we need to do is find the missing side. So whenever you have a right triangle, you could use this formula. This is going to be A, B, and the hypotenuse is C. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. In this case, we're looking for the hypotenuse, which is C. So we can write C squared is equal to, let's say that A is 5 and B is 12. So it's going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared. Now, 5 squared, or 5 times 5, that's 25. 12 times 12 is 144. And 25 plus 144 is 169. Now, we need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 169 is 13. So the hypotenuse of the right triangle is 13. So now that we have that, let's determine the sine and the cosine ratios. Sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite value, which is going to be 5 in this case. So opposite to theta is 5. Adjacent to it is 12. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So sine theta is going to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's 5 over 13. Now cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side 
divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So it's 12 over 13. And tangent, based on the toa part of Sokotoa, it's going to equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So in this case, it's 5 over 12. And so that's a quick and simple way to evaluate the trig ratios given a right triangle. Now, I want to mention that there are certain right triangles, special right triangles, that you should commit to memory. The first one is the 3-4-5 right triangle, which you've seen already. The second one you've also seen, the 5-12-13 triangle. There's also the 8-15-17 triangle. And then you have the 7-24-25 right triangle. I've also seen this one, the 9-40-41 right triangle, and also the 11-60-61 right triangle. However, in a typical trig course, these four are the most common that you'll see. And so make sure you commit these to memory if you don't want to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. So let's work on an example. So let's say this side is 14 and this side is 50. And here is the angle theta. So go ahead and find the values of sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we need to find a missing side. And this is a special right triangle. So the ones I've given you were these. Which one of these do you think corresponds to the triangle that we see on the right? Notice that 50 is twice the value of 25. And 14 is twice the value of 7. So any of these numbers can work, or any ratios of those numbers can work as well. So if we take 7, 24, and 25, and multiply each number by 2, this will give us the 14, 48, 50 right triangle. So the missing side is 48. Now sine theta is going to be equal to the opposite side, which has a length of 14, divided by the length of the hypotenuse, which is 50. So if we divide both numbers by 2, this reduces to 7 over 25. Now cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is 48, divided by the hypotenuse. And so that reduces to the special triangle that we had before, the 7, 24, 25 triangle. Tangent is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is 14, divided by the adjacent side, that's 48, and so that reduces to 7 over 24. Now what about secant, cosecant, and cotangent? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. It's 1 over sine. So if sine is equal to 7 over 25, cosecant is going to be 25 over 7. Now, to calculate the secant ratio, this is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is 24 over 25, secant is going to be 25 over 24. And finally, we have cotangent, which is the reciprocal of the tangent ratio. So tangent is 7 over 24, which means that cotangent is going to be 24 over 7. Now sometimes you might be given a right triangle trigonometry problem that looks something like this. So let's say you're told that sine theta is equal to 8 divided by 17, and that theta is somewhere between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. What is the value of cosine theta and tangent theta? But let's start with cosine. How can we find the value of cosine? Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to draw a right triangle, but in the appropriate quadrant. So let's draw the x-axis and the y-axis. That line doesn't look straight. So this is quadrant 1. Here we have quadrant 2, 
quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So the angle is typically measured from the positive x-axis. So this is going to be 0 degrees. Here we have 90, 180, 270, and 0 is the same as 360. So if theta is between 0 and 90, that tells us that we have a right triangle in quadrant 1. So let's draw our right triangle in quadrant 1. Now we're going to place our angle theta between the x-axis, which is here, and the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Now, we know that sine is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse has a length of 17, and opposite to theta is the opposite side, which is going to be 8. Now, this is a special right triangle. It's the 8, 15, 17 right triangle. So the missing side has to be 15. So now that we have everything filled in, we can now calculate the value of cosine theta and tangent theta. So cosine is going to be equal to the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So it's 15 over 17. And tangent is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So it's 8 over 15. And so that's it for this example. But now what's going to happen if we have another problem where, let's say, it's not in quadrant 1. So let's say that sine theta is equal to 2 over 5, and the angle is somewhere between pi over 2 and pi. Well, the first thing we need to know is what is pi and what is pi over 2? Pi and pi over 2, those are angles measured in radians. You need to know that pi is equal to 180 degrees, and pi over 2 is basically 180 divided by 2, so that's 90 degrees. So since the angles between 90 and 180, based on the quadrants that we drew, we know that we're dealing with quadrant 2. So let's begin by drawing the triangle in quadrant 2. Now let's consider the value of sine theta, which is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse has a length of 5, and opposite to theta is going to be 2. Now what is the missing side here? Now we don't have a special right triangle, so we have no choice but to use the Pythagorean theorem. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now, c in this example is 5. Let's say that b is 2, and so we're looking for a. So this should be 2 squared. 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. 25 minus 4 is 21. And so the missing side is the square root of 21, which we cannot simplify. So now, what is cosine theta? Cosine, we know it's equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So it's going to be the square root of 21 over 5. Now, you need to be careful. The y value is positive in quadrant 2 because you're going up. You're going in a positive y direction relative to the origin. The x value is negative. It's on the negative x-axis. So therefore, this should be negative square root 21. So in quadrant 2, cosine is equal to a negative value, but sine is positive. Now let's calculate tangent. So tangent theta is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So it's going to be 2 over negative square root 21. Now in a typical trigonometry course, 
you need to rationalize any fractions with a square root and a bottom. So to do that, you need to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 21. And so the final answer is going to be negative 2 square root 21 divided by 21. The square root of 21 times the square root of 21 is going to be just 21. Now let's calculate the other ratios, starting with cosecant theta and secant. So cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So all you need to do is flip this fraction. So if sine theta is 2 over 5, cosecant is 5 over 2. Now let's move on to secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So we got to flip that fraction. And so initially it's going to be negative 5 divided by the square root of 21. But we need to rationalize it. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 21. So it's going to be negative 5 square root 21 over 21. Now the last one that we need to find is cotangent theta. Now for this one, we know that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. However, you don't want to flip this answer because it's going to give you a square root and a bottom and then you'll have to rationalize it again. Rather, you want to flip this part of the answer because these two are the same but if you flipped this part, the square root will be on top and you do not need to rationalize it again. So cotangent theta is equal to negative square root 21 over 2, and that's it. So that's how you could find the other three trig functions when you're dealing with triangles that don't, when you're dealing with triangles that are not special by triangles. Hmm, I almost lost my train of thought there. Now, sometimes you might be asked to find the exact value of this expression. What is the exact value of sine of 30 degrees? Now, there are some calculators that will give you the exact value. However, you may need to do this without a calculator, which is typically what you'll see on an exam. So how can we evaluate sine 30 without a calculator? One, you can memorize the answer. Two, you could use the unit circle. By the way, for those of you who want more info on the unit circle or more examples on problems like these, I recommend that you check out my new trigonometry playlist. I'm going to post a link in the description section of this video so you can take a look at that. Or if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get access to new videos that I'm going to upload in the future as well. Now, in that trig playlist, you could find answers to almost any topic that you're going to encounter in a typical trade course. So I highly recommend you take a look at that, which can help you in your uh, class. Now let's get back to this problem. So what can we do to evaluate this trig function at 30 degrees? One way is to know two special right triangles. I'm going to give you the first one. The first one is called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this angle is 30, this is 60, and the box is basically a 90 degree right angle. Across the 30 is 1, across the 90 is 2, and across the 60 is the square root of 3. So if you commit this triangle to memory, you can evaluate things like sine 30, cosine 60, tangent 30, and so forth using Sokotoa. So we know that sine is equal to the opposite side. That is opposite to 30, not 60, because we're evaluating sine 30. So opposite to 30 is 1. And the hypotenuse is always across the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse is 2. Therefore, sine 30 is 1 half. Now, let's say if we wish to evaluate cosine of 30 degrees. So cosine is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And so that's how you could find the exact value of things like sine 30, cosine 60, and so forth. Now let's say 
if we wish to evaluate cosine pi over 4. How can we do so? So we're given an angle in radians, and we need to convert it to an angle in degrees. To convert radians to degrees, take the angle that you're given and multiply it by 180 over pi. So that's the conversion factor because pi is equal to 180. So you want to set it up in such a way that pi cancels, and this tells you that you need to divide. So we're going to divide 180 over 4. Now 180 divided by 4. Half of 180 is 90, and half of 90 is 45. So whenever you wish to divide something by 4, you could just half it two times. So this is equivalent to cosine of 45 degrees. Now there's another special reference triangle that you need to know. And it's the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So across the 45 angle, the side is equal to 1. Across the 90 angle, it's the square root of 2. So cosine 45, we can pick any of these two angles. Let's use this one. It's equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse based on Sokotoa. So it's 1 divided by the square root of 2. And of course, we need to rationalize this answer. And so the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Therefore, cosine 45 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Now, let's calculate tangent of pi over 4, or a tangent of 45 degrees. Now, let's use this angle. So tangent is going to be equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. So tangent of pi over 4, or tangent of 45 degrees, is 1. Now, what about this problem? Evaluate sine of 240 degrees. Go ahead and try that. Now, if you need to evaluate a trig function with an angle that is greater than 90, or not between 0 and 90, you need to find a reference angle. One way to do that visually is to draw the angle. So positive angles, you need to measure them traveling in a counterclockwise direction. And for negative angles, you need to travel in a clockwise direction or in the direction of a clock. So we know this is 0, 90, 180, 270. So 240 is somewhere in this region. So this would be an angle of 240 measured from the positive x-axis. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a right triangle. And so if this angle is 240 and this angle is 180, the difference between 240 and 180 is 60. So this angle is known as the reference angle. The angle between the x-axis and your terminal ray, which is where your ray should stop, that difference is the reference angle. Now, we can complete the triangle. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The three angles of a right triangle must always add up to 180. So across the 60 has to be the square root of 3. The side length across the 30 degree angle has to be 1, and across the 90 degree angle is 2. Now the next thing we need to do is include the appropriate signs. So the triangle is in quadrant 3, where it's on the left side or in the negative x-axis, so this should be negative 1. It's also below the x-axis towards the negative y direction, so this should be negative square root 3. But the hypotenuse is always positive. So keep that in mind. So now we can evaluate sine of 240 using the triangle that we set up here. So it's going to be associated with this reference angle. Opposite to the reference angle is negative square root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So the answer is going to be negative 
square root 3 divided by 2. And you could check that with a calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode. If you type in sine 240, you should get negative square root 3 over 2, which as a decimal is equal to negative 0.866 and so forth. So you should get this answer. Now let's try another example. Cosine of let's say 5 pi over 6. Feel free to pause the video and evaluate that expression without the use of a calculator. Now the first thing that I would recommend doing is converting the angle from radians to degrees. So let's multiply by 180 over pi. And so pi will cancel. Now 180 divided by 6. Well if we divide 18 by 6 we'll get 3. So all we need to do is add a 0. So 180 divided by 6 is 30. So we have 5 times 30. Now 5 times 3 is 15. So 5 times 30 is 150. So this is the same as cosine of 150 degrees. So 150 is in quadrant 2. So let's draw the triangle in quadrant 2. So from here to here is an angle of 150 degrees. Now the reference angle is going to be basically this acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal ray, which is where this line ends. So we know this is 180, and the terminal ray is at an angle of 150. So the difference between the two is 30 degrees. And so that's the reference angle of 150. The reference angle is the same as the angle in quadrant 1. To calculate it in quadrant 2, it's always going to be the difference between the angle, it's going to be the difference between 180 and the angle in quadrant 2. To calculate the reference angle, if it's in quadrant 3, it's the difference between the angle in quadrant 3 and 180. And if it's in quadrant 4, it's going to be 360 minus the angle in quadrant 4. Now let's go ahead and complete the triangle. So this is going to be 60 degrees and the side length across the 30 degree angle is 1. Across the 60 degree angle it's the square root of 3 and across the the right angle or the hypotenuse is going to be 2. Now this side is above the x-axis going in a positive y direction so this is going to be positive 1. So whenever you're drawing a triangle that is not in quadrant 1, make sure to add the appropriate signs. The hypotenuse will always be positive, but in quadrant 2, the triangle is located on the negative x-axis. So this is going to be negative square root 3. So now we can evaluate cosine 150, focusing on the reference angle of 30. So cosine is equal to the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse. So cosine 150 is going to be negative square root 3 over 2. Cosine 30, if you type this in your calculator, it's positive square root 3 over 2. So notice that an angle and its reference angle have the same magnitude. However, based on where the triangle is located, based on the quadrant, the sign will change. So cosine 150, it's negative square root 3 over 2, even though cosine 30 is positive square root 3 over 2. Have you ever heard of the expression, all students take calculus? It's a trig expression, and it's useful for helping students to remember which trig ratio is positive or negative in a certain quadrant. So the first letter, A, is for quadrant 1, this is for quadrant 2, for quadrant 3, and so forth. So the all part tells us that sine, cosine, and tangent, they're all positive in quadrant 1. So S 
c and t sine cosine and tangent they're all positive in the first quadrant and then students or s that tells us that only sine is positive in quadrant two everything else cosine and tangent they're both negative in quadrant two and then take t tells us that only tangent is positive in quadrant three everything else sine and cosine they're both negative in quadrant three and then the last one calculus is for quadrant four so only cosine c is positive in quadrant four everything else is negative and so that's what that expression helps you to keep in mind all students take calculus so the three trig functions they're all positive in quadrant one in quadrant two only sine is positive take in quadrant three tangent is positive calculus in quadrant four cosine is positive it also helps to realize that sine is related to the y value so whenever y is positive sine will be positive and so y is positive in quadrants one and two y is negative in quadrants three and four because that's below the x-axis now cosine is associated with the x value x is positive on the right side so in quadrants one and four cosine is positive x is negative on the left side so in quadrants two and three cosine is negative tangent is basically related to y over x so tangent is always negative when sine and cosine do not have the same value as you can see one is positive and the other is negative tangent is positive whenever sine and cosine have the same value because a positive divided by a positive will give you a positive result and a negative divided by another negative number will also give you a positive result so you can think of tangent as y over x now let's try this example tangent of negative 120 degrees go ahead and work on that example now first let's draw a picture now we have a negative angle so we can't travel in the counterclockwise direction rather we need to go clockwise so this is zero this is negative 90 negative 180 negative 270 so here's zero negative 90 and we're gonna stop at negative 120 now the difference between negative 180 and negative 120 is 60 so 60 is the reference angle it's the angle between the x-axis and the terminal ray so once again we have a 30 60 90 right triangle so across the 30 is 1 across the 60 will be the square root of 3 across the 90 is 2 now in quadrant 3 x and y are both negative we could see that y is below the x-axis and x is on the left side where it's negative so now we can evaluate tangent so tangent of the reference angle is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse I mean not the hypotenuse but the adjacent side so it's negative square root 3 divided by negative 1 which is just positive square root 3 so as we could see in quadrant 3 the result is that tangent is equal to a positive number now let's try this one secant of 225 degrees so let's draw a triangle so we have a positive angle this is 90 180 225 so the difference between 225 and 180 is 45 so that's going to be the reference angle for this particular problem so what we have is a 45 45 
90 reference triangle. So across the 45 angle will be equal to 1, and across the 90 is going to be the square root of 2. Now in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. Now, it's better if we find cosine before we evaluate secant. Secant is 1 over cosine. Now we know that cosine is equal to the adjacent side. Let's use this angle. So adjacent to that angle is negative 1 divided by the hypotenuse. And so cosine is negative 1 over the square root of 2. So if this is cosine, then secant is the reciprocal of that fraction, which means it's negative square root 2 over 1, or simply negative square root 2. To show your work from this step, you can multiply the top and the bottom by negative square root 2. So here, these will cancel, and the negative signs will cancel at the bottom. So you get a final answer of negative square root 2 for this example. Now let's try another example. So let's go with cosecant negative 13 pi over 6. Go ahead and try that example. Now just like before, let's convert the angle from radians to degrees. So let's multiply by 180 over pi. Now 180 divided by 6, we know it's 30. And 30 times 13. You could think of 13 as being 10 plus 3. And so 10 times 30 is 300. 3 times 30 is 90. 300 plus 90 is 390. So this is equal to cosecant of negative 390. Now, if you have a large positive or negative angle that's not between 0 or 360, what you can do is add or subtract by 360. Because if you do that, whatever position you start from, you're going to end at that position. So if I start here and I add 360, I'm going to make one full ro uh, rotation around the circle, and it's going to lead me to the same starting point. These are known as coterminal angles. And anytime you evaluate a coterminal angle with a trig ratio, the answer will always be the same. So if I do negative 390 and add 360 to it, this is going to be negative 30. Thus, cosecant of negative 390 is the same as cosecant of negative 30. And if you want to get rid of the negative angle, you could add 360 again to negative 30. And so that's going to be positive 330. For those of you who do not wish to deal with any negative angles. Now let's draw this. So let's say if we wanted to draw this angle, 330. This would be 90, 180, 270, and 330 will be somewhere in that region. So that's an angle of 330. Now we can also get the same ray by going in this direction, which will be negative 30. Or if you want to get this angle, this would be negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, negative 390. All three angles lead us to this ray. So therefore, because they have the same terminal position, they are called coterminal angles. Co means equal or the same. At least that's the basic idea behind that word. Either case, we could see that the reference angle, that is the angle between the x-axis and the terminal ray, is 30, because this angle is negative 30. And the reference angle is really what we need to get the answer. So once again, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So across the 30 is going to be 1. Across the 60, square root 3. And across the 90, 2. So in quadrant 4, x is positive, but y is negative. So focusing on the reference angle, we need to evaluate cosecant. And cosecant is 1 over sine. And sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite to the reference angle is negative 1. And the hypotenuse is 2. 
So 1 divided by negative 1 half. If we multiply the top and the bottom by negative 2, negative 1 half and negative 2 will cancel to positive 1. And so the answer is 1 times negative 2, or simply negative 2. So this is the value of our original problem, cosecant negative 13 pi over 6. That's the answer. Well, that's it for this video. Now, for those of you who want more topics in trig, or even more example problems like the ones you see on the board, take a look at the description section of this video. I'm going to post a link to my new trigonometry video playlist, which you can get more info and more problems. Now, if you haven't already done so, feel free to subscribe to this channel. All you need to do is click the red button at the bottom right of the video, and you could do so. And whatever you do, don't forget to click the notification bell. Otherwise, you may not be receiving any new video content that I'm currently publishing or will publish in the future. So thanks again for watching.